Hi guys, welcome to Everything Arsenal. It's a start of a new week, which means we are getting closer and closer to the Premier League. In fact, just 11 days to be precise to the start of the Premier League. Arsenal against Crystal Palace or Crystal Palace against Arsenal. It's going to be an away game. Hopefully we do get some transfers done very soon. Um, it's looking positive from uh, what everyone is talking about and what, uh, what uh, the likes of what are talking about. So in this one, we will be talking about the latest on Edu and Atita's comments, the latest on Tillemans and update on him. That is the guy we all really want, right? Is the guy that we really want. Bukayo Saka's contract talks. We had, uh, we had, a uh, we have an update on that one. Also, Band Leno to Fulham is getting closer and closer, and Tavai's loan move is also getting closer. So, without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. Let's start with Edu's comments. Um, he had an interview with Sky Sports the other day. So, here were he, were his comments. Um, Edu on Arsenal's transfer strategy, according to Fabrizio Romano, this is what Edu had to say. There's still a lot to do. We are in the middle of the transfer window, and things can happen so th that's that's not as convincing as you want it to be but uh they definitely are looking um for transfers according to journalists like Fabrizio Romano who said we're definitely looking at transfers they're definitely looking at some players three up to three players so it, it's looking like it's going to be a really tra busy transfer window and we're expecting more than 10 players to leave so between now and the end of August and the start of September we could be seeing 15 people moving in and out so that was an up, the update from Edu. Here's what Atita had to say when asked the same question. Atita said, uh, you can see we are still a bit short in some positions for the way that we want to play, but it is something that we are trying to address. We have increased the quality of the team and the level of the squad is something that we want to keep raising. So he does agree as well that we still need to um, buy players. Obviously, I'm sure he's talking about... Um, right back situation you told me as we injured we're having to play by night out there which i don't mind by the way but uh, it's not that is not his actual position we are having to play um Tavares. Uh, we don't really have anyone to come in for Tavares before zinchenko came in that is um sorted but i think they wanted to play zinchenko as a midfielder so it's looking like we can still get a left back um in terms of midfield we are looking very short as well especially if the players end up leaving and that is something that edu and that's definitely know about um we also got another update from another article there they're talking about um which players are not trying to get and the article said that arsenal are looking for three like signing to uh, signing three different positions players from three different positions um winger wing has always been talked about but i'm not sure about signing a winger but they say arsenal are working on signing a new left center back a midfielder and a winger and many players are leaving the club so yeah we know up to 10 players will be leaving the club so in terms of signing a new left center back that would be a surprise but we we do expect pablo Mari to um to move on um midfielder we definitely need a midfielder for me i would go for two midfielders not even one and a winger that many journalists like um david Onstein and fabrizio roman have already confirmed that we are looking to sign a new winger and Fabrizio Romano actually said that he knows about the winger, but he's not going to talk about him until it's 100% confirmed. So he wants to be sure. So it's looking like you're definitely going to get a winger. I don't know who. I don't know if it's going to be a backup for Sack. Is it going to be a left winger who's going to come and start? Because if he gets a back, uh, like an, an actual start on the left side, I don't have a problem with Martinelli and Smithro. But if you can get someone who can start on that side and then Martinelli and Smithro come in as bench players, then you're building a really, really strong squad. Personally, I'd still go for midfielders first. So according to Edu, according to Atet, and according to other reports, Arsenal are still looking to sign more players. Um, hopefully, you do get at least one before the start of the Premier League. And then for the others, then you, you can probably get them when this has already started uh you want to get your actual deals your real real deals the ones that you need the important deals you want to get them done before the season starts and then for backups you can get them after the season starts but i'm pretty sure we are going to get at least three players uh, i was thinking two signings and then one loan deal but we have to wait and see so that's what the, those are the reports from those um uh from our guys at uh, and edu what's the latest on yuri tillemans is yuri tillemans going to be one of those players that comes in we've been told we want a midfielder we are going to get a midfielder Midfielder is Tillemans one of those guys. Actually, Tillemans wants to leave Leicester, and Leicester fans kind of want him to leave. So this is just definitely pointing out to be an Arsenal transfer. Like he doesn't even want to be there, and the fans are kind of had enough of him there. So uh, according to reports, Arsenal and Yuri Tillemans have an agreement. There are still factors to be completed in order for a deal to happen, but the information is confirmed. So according to reports, again, Arsenal and Yuri Tillemans have an agreement. We know that personal terms have been agreed. The only thing that is holding us back is a transfer fee, agreeing a transfer fee with Leicester, which will be less than 30 million. Unless, there, unless we don't know something that is going on um and uh the background maybe leicester wants something like 40 million that we don't know about and arsenal are trying to negotiate it maybe 
maybe we wouldn't know about that and that's not trying to do um transfers secretly at the moment but i really doubt um he's already refused to sign a new contract there we were told that he's, he's he was going to hold talks uh, with brendan rogers that was last monday a full week ago um he's already played a, a couple of uh, preseason games for them i think against derby and another team and he played both of them and he was a captain i think in one of them so I don't know. I don't know. He's already playing for them, but he wants to leave and Arsenal want him. So I really don't understand why we haven't gotten him yet. But again, just like I've said the last three, four weeks, I am still confident we might not get him as early as we want. But by the end of the transfer window, I'm pretty sure we are going to get him. I don't think he'll go to any other team. If things don't work, I, would, I can see him uh, remaining at um, I can see him remaining at uh, Leicester, obviously, but I don't see him going to any other team. So that's the latest on Yuri Tillemans. Arsenal and um, Arsenal and Tillemans have an agreement, but Arsenal and Leicester still don't have an agreement. I'm pretty sure if we make a bid of like 28 million, we are going to get him unless they're trying to negotiate something. But hopefully this would be the kind of deal that would really excite us. Like if we, we could get him like this week or the start of next week, that is a deal that could really, really excite us. Yuri Tillemans to Arsenal. Uh, uh, adding to the likes of Pate and uh, the likes of Jacques in midfield and the likes of Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, I think we'll be looking strong first team and second team and then get another two signings. We are definitely good. The USA tour was really good. We smashed everyone that we faced. But our first team is very good. But, you know, like if it gets any injuries, our second team and third teams are not that good. And adding players like this would definitely make us even more stronger. That's the latest on Tillemans. Um, let's keep the hope Um uh, let's not lose the hope on him. Hopefully, he does join us. What about Bukayo Saka? Remember, I've always said, um, if you want to compete, if you want to improve, you have to improve your squad and you have to keep the players that are good for you. You can't just um, bring in good players and then sell your good players. That's basically the same thing. And stay, you, you can do that if you want to stay on the same level you are. You can sell your good players and then bring in the similar good players if you want to stay on the same level. But if you want to improve like we want, you want to go to third, uh, to fourth, to third, to win a couple of trophies, we have to keep our better players. And on Bukayo Saka, according to reports, um edu on how soccer contract talks are going this was edu's interview the other day good very good everybody is happy things you love to hear uh, we saw his qualities um he scored um he scored during the preseason uh, he got an assist as well for nelson you can see his qualities every time a defender has the job to mark him it's very very hard to play against bukayo soccer our uh, best player the last three years like someone, if someone like a Bukayo Saka left Arsenal today, like we'd have we'd have to mourn for like the entire season, and we know that um that cannot happen. So according to reports, the contract talks are going well. Remember, he talks about him getting, and I don't know the exact uh, amount, but he's one of the lowest um earning players at Arsenal. I think it's somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand pounds a week which is very low when you think like Bellerin and Torero and all these players are earning more than him that is crazy because Bukayasak is one of our best players he was our best player last season he was our best player the pre previous season and he was our best season the season before that the play best player in the preseason before that as well so he, he, he's so good you cannot afford to lose him you have to keep him alongside the likes of Martinelli Martinelli didn't sign a new contract long time ago Smith as well I think a couple of seasons ago signed a new contract we have to keep those three players you have to keep the likes of um Gabriel you have to keep the likes of Ramsdale Thomas Party hopefully stays fit all those players that are great enough for you you have to keep them you get rid of the ones that are not doing the job for you and you keep the ones that are doing the job for you so that's the latest on Bukayo Saka contract talks i do say they are going positively he will stay but some others have to leave and one of them is ban leno now this one has been been talk talked about the last one month we know that ban leno is going to leave not because he's a bad goalkeeper but because he wants to be a fast choice goalkeeper and he wouldn't really get that at Arsenal. I've still seen some people saying, why are we um, selling Band Leno and keeping Matt Tana? Matt Tana is new, by the way. Um, I don't know why people are saying that, because Leno wants to leave. That's what people need to understand. If a player wants to leave, there's not, not so much you can um, do about it. The last time I remember goalkeepers having this kind of debate was when Czech and Couture were at Chelsea, and um, Couture was the first choice goalkeeper, and Czech was convinced to stand. He was not happy for those six months. I think he left, um, he left, he left for Arsenal then, but you could see he was not happy at all. For me, I, I wouldn't want to keep a player who's not happy. Matistan is happy to be a backup. Leno is not happy to just play in the Carabao Cup in a couple of Europa League games. So we know he's a good goalkeeper and it's looking like he's going to leave. The reason why he's not left yet is because Arsenal and Fulham had not dis uh, not agreed on the fee. We were, we were asking for 11, 12 million. But surprisingly, it's looking like he's, he's going to even go for lower than what we expected in the first place. So according to reports, 
Band Leno is close to joining Fulham for a fee of 8 million, according to Sam Dean. Just 8 million. That's a bit of a blow. Uh, yes, if you add that to all the other players you're going to sell, yes, you can probably get one good player from that. But Leno is a very good goalkeeper. He's, he's, in, he's in his prime right now. Eight million seems like a bit of a, of a hit. But that is something that we definitely need to improve on. That is something that we have suffered with um, the last few years, five, six years, letting players go on a free from the previous regime and all the owners and all the board members from the previous regime, letting players go on a free, the likes of Ramsey, Ozil, Mikateri, and Sanchez all these players losing them on a free players that would really have gotten them for 60 70 million another um transfer line love 8 million seems like a bit um of a hit really it is a hit let's be honest i would have loved something like 15 or 16 million for him but considering he didn't play last season and maybe he's heading closer to his, the end of his contract and it's fulham really how much do you expect fulham to pay they wouldn't really splash that million for a goalkeeper so that's the latest on Ban Lane. It's looking like he's edging closer to joining Fulham for only 8 million. So that is a bit of a hit. What about Nuno Tavares? Another that we expected to leave. Uh, he came under a lot of uh, criticism during the preseason, uh, making a couple of mistakes. He cost us the goal against Orlando City. Several fans are not happy with him. Several fans are actually asking for him to be sold. So what's the latest on him? According to reports, we all know that three associated wanted him, Atalanta wanted him, and Brighton wanted him. But uh, Sorry, according to reports, the deal between Arsenal and Atalanta for Nuno Tavares is essentially a loan with option to sell for Arsenal more than it is an option to buy for Atalanta. So I'm hearing that Atalanta didn't want to buy him fast or to get him on loan unless Arsenal added an option to buy in the clause. But I'm also hearing that Arsenal added an option to buy and an option to like keep or something crazy like that. So it's a, it's a bit of a complicated um, uh, contract. The more we hear about it, um, the, the closer it gets to joining Atalanta, we'll do some investigation in that and how the deal will work. But it's looking like Atalanta are willing are, are willing to actually buy him in the future. Uh, uh, like, basically, even if it comes to Arsenal, like if Arsenal decided, decide to sell him the next three years, Atalanta is still the first option for him from Arsenal, basically. Like that is what Atalanta wants. So even if uh, you gets back to Arsenal and plays poorly for another two years. When Arsenal want to sell him, Atalanta will be the first according to the clause in the contract. But it's a bit of a complicated uh, thing. We need to understand it more. Uh, don't, don't take my word for it as of now. That, that's just what I've seen from the reports. But let's see how it goes. But it's looking like he'll join Atalanta on loan with an option to buy and an option to sell later on. So let's see how that one goes. But I think a loan spell would be great for him. Let's see how it goes. So that's the latest on what Edu and Atita say on the transfers. I think we'll definitely sign players. That's the latest on Tillemans, Saka, Band Leno, and also Nuno Tavares. Let me know what you think about all of them. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch up with you guys on the next one.